Hello, and welcome to this TI Precision Lab introducing Power on Glitch for Precision DAX. In this video, we will define Power on Glitch. We will also discuss the various sources of Power on Glitch and review a few methods to reduce the impact of the glitch in your design. To get started, we need to answer the question, what is Power on Glitch? We usually define Power on Glitch as an unwanted transient on a precision DAC output that occurs while the supplies are ramping to their final values at startup. In this image, we can see that as the supply voltage ramps, the output voltage ramps as well. Eventually, the supply will reach a high enough amplitude that the output will be asserted to ground. The duration and magnitude of these transients can vary and are primarily dependent on the DAC's internal output buffer architecture, the slew rate of the power supply, and external parasitics. These transients can cause problems in applications where the DAC is driving some sensitive input, for example a sensor, a motor, or an actuator. One of the causes of power on glitch is the output architecture of the DAC's output buffer. Output glitch due to the design of the output stage of the DAC buffer is caused by the final stage of the amplifier. Most output buffers feature a pair of MOSFETs that are used to source or sync current to the output. The rest of the output amplifier can be considered the pre-output stage. During normal operation, the pre-output stage would bias the PMOS and NMOS gate to ensure that the correct voltage is on the output. The PMOS gate is usually the problematic FET in the design and will primarily be the cause of power on glitch. Let's consider what is happening at each node during startup. The supply, as indicated as V+, starts at 0 volts. The output stage of the gate of the PMOS, indicated as VP, and the output shown as V out are also 0 volts. At this point, the PMOS is not conducting. When the V plus supply begins to ramp, it will eventually reach a voltage where the voltage across the source and the drain of the PMOS will pass a certain threshold and the PMOS will begin to conduct. Recall that at this point, the VP voltage is still 0 volts which means the voltage from the gate to the source is now negative. When the PMOS is conducting, the output will increase until it reaches the supply voltage. This state will continue with V out tracking the supply voltage until another threshold is met. When the V plus supply is sufficiently high, the control circuitry of the output buffer will be enabled. This is called the control threshold. When the control threshold is met, the voltage at the PMOS gate, VP, will rise to the supply rail. This will have the effect of bringing VGS to zero volts, which will stop the output from conducting. When that occurs, the Vout voltage will now return to ground. Now the output will remain at the ground potential while the V plus supply finishes its ramp and settles to the final value. The total energy of the glitch will increase when the supply ramps slowly, as the time from when the V plus supply reaches the VSD threshold until it reaches the control threshold is longer. While the output stage is the primary contributor to power on glitch, some glitch energy can be attributed to capacitive parasitics. Consider stray capacitance that couples the output of the DAC to the supply, which is isolated by a series contact resistance. When the VDD supply ramps quickly, this acts as an AC transient, which will couple to the output. This contribution is generally less than glitch from the PMOS output stage, but can still be noticeable in some designs. Now that we've reviewed the primary sources of power on glitch, Let's talk about ways to remove it or reduce it. The first and easiest way to reduce the power on glitch is to simply select a device that does not have as much. GI has taken great efforts to reduce the power on glitch on our precision DAX, and as such, many devices have very little. In applications where almost no glitch can be tolerated, a device could be selected that has almost none. For example, here is the power on glitch of the AMC7836. 
it can be seen that this device has less than 10 millivolts of glitch. Power on glitch is usually specified on precision DAX and can be found in the electrical characteristics table in their product data sheet. The most common way to reduce power on glitch is to add a cap and resistor in parallel with the output. The resistor provides a current path to ground, which means that the current being conducted through the PMOS output stage will only create a current across this resistor, rather than causing the output to rise to the supply value. The downside of this is that the resistor will conduct current all the time, resulting in extra power consumption when the DAC is in normal operation. The capacitor will form an RC filter with the output impedance and parasitic contact resistance of the DAC output. While this does not reduce the total energy, it does reduce the peak voltage and distributes the energy over a longer period of time. The downside is that the cap will reduce the slew rate of the DAC output in normal operation. The parallel capacitor and resistor is common enough of a solution that you can find it in most data sheets. Here you can see with the addition of a 5 kilo ohm resistor and a 200 picofarad capacitor, the glitch is reduced to about 25% compared to the glitch without it. Most data sheets will suggest the value for the capacitor and the resistor, but if it does not, there are a few limitations to consider. First, the capacitor must be lower than the max capacitive load limit as specified in the data sheet. Secondly, the resistor must not violate the current limits of the DAC output during normal operation. One more way to reduce the power on glitch would be to add a clamp circuit, which shorts the output to ground through a low impedance path. This will virtually remove the glitch, but requires an NMOS FET and some kind of power good signal. The source of this signal can be difficult to produce though. The power good signal can be created by a simple voltage supervisor circuit. The most basic voltage supervisor circuit can be created with just an NMOS and a few resistors. The power good signal could be used to drive the NMOS clamp on the DAC output and would be active low. The issue with this circuit is that there are two voltage potentials needed. The voltage being supervised, V supervised, and the voltage supplying the NMOS FET, VA. If VA is supplied before the V supervised supply begins to ramp, this circuit works great. Notice the upper plot shows the power good signals collapses once the supervised voltage crosses the VGS threshold of the NMOS FET. In the lower plot, we see what would happen if the VA supply is the same as the supply being supervised. Here we see that the power good signal basically stays low, which is a problem when the supply is just starting to ramp as that is when the output glitch is most likely to occur. A good solution to this problem is to supply the supervisor circuit using a voltage that is greater than and ramps earlier than the supply you need to supervise. In most applications, a precision DAC is supplied with some sort of LDO regulator. That regulator should also be sourced by some sort of DC signal, usually another higher voltage LDO or the output of a switch mode power supply. Using that source to supply the VA input of the supervisor, means that the supervisor is powered before the VDD starts to ramp. This is an excellent method in combination with the output clamp to reduce the power on glitch of the DAC. Another source of a power good signal, which will simplify the design, is to locate an LDO that already has a power good flag that can be repurposed for the signal to drive the gate of the NMOS clamp. While it is not a universal LDO feature, it is still very common. Okay, well those are the basics of power on glitch and methods to remove it. In summary, we show that there are two main causes of power on glitch. Stray capacitance between the DAC output pin and the supply pin, and the DAC's output buffer having an uncontrolled PMOS FET that allows current to flow between the supply and the output. We also discussed some practical strategies to reduce power on glitch. The first strategy, which is simply selecting a DAC which is designed to limit power on glitch, is the easiest. This functionality can be found in the device's datasheet. Next, we discuss the benefits and drawbacks of having a resistor and capacitor on the output of the DAC connected to ground to help discharge the glitch and to smooth the output. Finally, we discuss how to implement a voltage supervisor on the power supply to clamp the output to ground during startup. 
Okay, now let's do a short quiz on these topics to test our knowledge. Question one, which of the following is not a cause of power on glitch? A, capacitive coupling between the supply and the DAC output. B, the output stage of the integrated DAC buffer does not have enough supply margin to operate normally. C, the supply voltage of the DAC is ramping too quickly or too slowly. Or D, a resistive load from the output to ground. The answer is D. Let's review the other choices. First, capacitive coupling between the output supply and the DAC output can contribute to glitch as a transient on the supply will induce a voltage on the DAC output. Secondly, the output stage of the output buffer can cause current to be conducted directly to the DAC if the pre-output stage does not have sufficient supply headroom. Next, the ramp rate of the supply can contribute to glitch because the other causes described in A and B. If the glitch ramps very quickly, the capacitive element will induce a larger voltage glitch. If the supply ramps too slowly, the output stage could be in an uncontrolled state for a longer period, resulting in greater glitch energy. D, a resistive load to ground, does not contribute to glitch. In fact, it usually attenuates the glitch energy. The resistive path allows current being conducted by the PMOS FET on the output stage to have a path to ground. As well, it discharges the capacitive load coupled to the output. Question 2. True or false? Only external circuitry can solve the power on glitch problems you might be experiencing. The answer is false. The best solution for power on glitch is device selection. TI has spent a lot of effort to improve power on glitch in its DAC products. Good part selection in glitch critical applications can reduce the risk of problems. That concludes this TI Precision Lab about power on glitch in Precision DACs. Please find more Precision DAC technical resources and search Precision DAC products by visiting ti.com/pdac. Thank you for watching.